So the first R tip of the day has to do with uh, how to replace missing values with uh, fixed values that you have in mind. For example, replacing all the NAs in a, a data set with the average value for that uh, column. So in the namsys 08rdata data file, if we were to look at the patient's data frame and select ID and height, uh, we would notice that there are two columns, ID and height, and most of the values of height appear to be missing, at least amongst the first 10 values that we see on the screen here. Um, and so one of the things that we might wanna do is to replace those missing values with some other value uh, just so that we can proceed with our analyses if it's important that we uh, can't have missing values for that particular variable. So let's first count up and see how many missing values there are. Let's start with the patient's data frame, group by height. Remember that height is an integer or rather it's a kind of round numbers. And so what that means is that there's not gonna, there's gonna be several people who have the exact same height in this data set. Then we count them up by saying summarize number equals N. And then we arrange those numbers in descending order. And what we find is that by and large, height as a missing value is the most common value for height in the entire data set with 16,000 people uh, having missing values for height. So let's say we wanted to replace the missing value with the mean value. Uh, this is generally not a good idea, but there, there are better ways of you know, m filling in missing values and which we refer to as missing value imputation. We'll come back to that later in the course, but it is sometimes helpful uh, to fill in the missing values if you need this column in order to do um, some kind of downstream analysis. And let's say if, even though most of the values are missing and you, you, know, you don't wanna throw this column out. And so you've decided to fill in the missing values with the mean value. So if I type in patients, then summarize mean height equals mean height, will I get what I want? If you look at this closely and you remember what I said on the last slide, the answer is no, um, because you can't calculate a mean when you have missing values involved. This is R's way of reminding you that if there are missing values and you're about to you know, summarize them in some way using mean, median, um, or any of the other kind of summary functions, you have to specify what to do with the missing values. And so this won't work because you'll get a result that is just a missing value. However, by now we know how to deal with this. And so the easiest way to deal with this is just to tell the mean function to go ahead and remove those missing values before calculating the height. And now I get a mean height of approximately 61. So if I wanted to go ahead and replace the missing values of height with 61, here's how I could go about doing it. I would start with patients, then I would mutate and say height equals if else. The first argument of if else is the condition. And so is.na is a function in R that tells us for each value whether that value is missing or not. So if is.na returns true, that means the value was missing. If is.na returns false, that means the value was not missing. So in this case, if the value was missing for height, then we're gonna assign it a 61. And if the value of height was not missing, then we'll just keep the value there, whatever it was. And that's why in my kind of third argument, which is my else condition, so if, you know, or a false condition, um, I have just the word height. And then I select out uh, just the ID and height columns. One thing also to take note of here is that when I mutated, I couldn't just write if else, I actually had to say height equals. And by saying height equals, I'm actually overwriting the current value of height such that the missing values get filled in and the non-missing values are preserved. So save this slide and take a close look at it because this is a pretty common thing that you'll have to do. Um, and you've already learned the if else function. The main new thing you're learning here is mixing the if else function with the is.na function to find those missing values. And if I do that, notice that all of the values that were previously missing for height 
have now been filled in with a value of 61. And if I you know, fill the, those missing values with the if-else function, and then I group by height and I count the values up by using summarize number equals n, and then I arrange them in descending order, you'll notice that 61 is now the most common value for height. And there's actually 17,000 people who have a value of 61 now. Um, and that's probably because there was already some people with a value of 61 and all the missing values also now have a height of 61. And so the number of people who have a height of 61 is more than the number of people who originally had a missing value. What if I wanted to do the same thing for weight? So first, let me figure out what I should be filling in the weight value with. And so I'm going to calculate the mean of the weight column. And I get approximately 156. And so now I try to do the same thing, where I say patients, then mutate weight equals uh, if else is dot na weight. So I'm checking if the value is missing. If it is missing, assign it 156. If it's not missing, assign the weight variable of weight. So basically change nothing is what I'm saying if it's not missing. And then select ID and weight. And I, you're probably expecting that I'm gonna get the right answer here. But just to prepare you a little bit, I'll give you a heads up that that's not the case. And in fact, if I run this, I'll get an error. And the error I'll get is that the false condition must be a double vector, not an integer vector. And that might seem like a cryptic error to you. But when you use either if else or case when, and you get an error that mentions two different types of data, like in this case, double and integer are two different types of numbers. What's happening here is that the 156 and the weight are not returning the same data type. And the if else function in R makes sure that when you have an, a true condition and a false condition, they return the exact same data type. So why is this not working? It's because the weight column is an integer and 156, the way I have it written, is a numeric. So how do we know that weight is an integer? So if we had done STR patients to take a look at the patient's data frame, we would notice that the height column uh, is numeric. You'll see an NUM next to it. A numeric is the same as a double. And all that means is that the numbers have the option of having a decimal point um, followed by decimal point information. In this case, none of the heights actually have that. They all look like integers, but they're stored as numerics, uh, which means that the practical side of that is that they take up more space in memory, but it's you know a different data type than an integer. Whereas if you look at weight, you'll see INT, uh, which means integer. So if you were to add a decimal point after any of those numbers there, weight would actually get converted from an integer into a numeric, which would then cause it to take up more memory. Uh, you can also notice that if you look at some of the other variables like region, pay type, and race, those are stored as character variables in this data set. So integer numeric is the, in my view, kind of the only confusing one because height and weight look both like integers, but in fact, height isn't a numeric and weight is an integer. So the if else function with the underscore in it, which is the if else function that comes with tidyverse, checks to make sure that all of the possible results for both the true and the false condition have the same data type. So in this statement, if else is dot na weight, 156 in height, weight is missing. So if weight is missing, the result 156 is a numeric. And if weight is not missing, then you get back an integer value because the weight column is an integer. Um, and so you have to deal with this in some way. If you already know some R and you've used R before, you might have used the if else function that does not have an underscore in it, which comes with base R. That function does not check data types. And so you can get all kinds of 
really weird errors uh, as a result of that, where you actually don't get an error uh, in your code, your code just produces a result that you wouldn't expect. So the if underscore else function, which comes with tidyverse, tries to prevent you from those kind of weird mistakes by resulting in an error to make you deal with this kind of situation. So you really have two options to deal with the situation. The first option is to convert weight into a numeric. And this might be the only option if the you know, mean value of weight that we wanted to introduce to the data set was a 155.9, such that you know the only way to store a 155.9 is to convert that entire column into a numeric column, or to specify that 156 is an integer. So let's just try both options. If we wanted to convert weight to a numeric, all we have to do is use a helper function that's called as.numeric. So before we run our if else function, we would actually convert weight into a numeric variable by saying weight equals as.numeric weight inside of the mutate function. And then if we ran this code, we'd get the expected result where all the missing values of weight have been filled in. So if we um, wanted to specify 156 as an integer, there's actually two ways of doing that. One is that when we actually write the number 156, we could just write as dot integer 156. And then R would know that when we say 156, we mean that 156 as an integer. But one shorthand that you might see um, to, and it's good to be familiar with, is 156 with a capital L after it also indicates that you mean 156 as an integer. So for example, if we had that same mutate function um, and we added an L after the number 156, then R would know that that 156 is actually an integer and your code would produce the expected result. And similarly, similarly, as I mentioned before, we could have written as.integer156, and that would have worked totally fine too, uh, and given us the same result. If you're wondering what does L stand for, this is actually the topic of much debate. Uh, some people argue that it stands for long, which is another way of storing very large integers. Other people have debunked that in saying that really this should have been an I, but because an I would look a lot like a one, uh, they decided to make this an L instead of an I. So regardless of what you believe, that's why that shorthand uh, you know, uh, is the way it is. And you might occasionally run into this uh, in our code that you're reading online, uh, inside of you know, tidyverse examples especially. Uh, so it's good to be familiar with this. So if you're wondering, that's really confusing, what do I actually need to know? Here's what you need to know. Both if else and case when, when they're used inside of mutate functions, always check to make sure that all the possible values that could get assigned belong to the same data type. So for example, all should either be integers, numerics, doubles, um, characters or logicals, etc. This is important to check because it can prevent you from making mistakes. So if you have an if else statement that returns a character data type if the situation is true, um, and it returns the uh, logical type true if the situation was false, then the logical type true will actually get converted into a character and it will not work the way you expect. So if you're wondering what kinds of mistakes can you make, imagine if we had written this. If we had written patients then mutate weight equals if else is dot na weight, quote, missing, and then wait. What would have happened is that if the value was missing, then the character string missing would have gotten assigned to that value. And if the value was not missing, then the original weight would have gotten assigned. But in this case, the weight would have been converted into a character, which is probably not what you intend, because if you then start to do comparisons with numbers, and you compare characters with numbers, you can get all sorts of unexpected results. So the important thing is if you actually want the weight to get converted to a character, you have to explicitly write here as.characterWeight 
and then this code will work. But in this stated form, it will not work. And I would argue that's overall a good thing. So yikes, we would not want this kind of code to slip through without producing an error. Because if we had something down further in the pipe where we were checking the, the value of weight against a number, we might not get an error, we might get just an unexpected result. And that's not what we want. So I wanted to do a brief aside on missing values. Uh, because if you want to replace a number with a missing value, uh, this is information that you'll need to know. So, so far, we've talked about is.na as the universal way of checking if values are missing uh, in a vector or in a column. So this is true. Um, I haven't deceived you. This is absolutely true. And this is the universal way of checking for that. We've also talked in this course about NAs being the default missing value in R. Um, that's kind of true, but it's not 100% accurate. And I'll tell you why and tell you why that's worth knowing. It is true that all missing values in a data frame show up as NA. So if you see a value of NA when you're you know, look, viewing a data frame, it's true that that's a missing value. However, it's also true that missing values have data types. So if you were to assign a value of NA to a variable, that NA is technically a missing logical value. So in a true false column, it would be totally fine to replace, let's say, false with NA because they're the same data type. If you have a missing integer and you want to replace a missing integer with a missing value, you actually need to know the type of the column. And if you know it's an integer, you can't just replace the missing integer with an NA because you're actually trying to replace an integer with a logical value is what R thinks. So if you want to replace an integer with a missing value, that missing value has to be NA underscore integer underscore. And just like NA, this is a reserved value in R that stands for missing values of integer type. If you've got a numeric or a double, you would hope that they would have made the missing value for that NA underscore numeric underscore. But in fact, it's NA underscore real underscore. So if you have a missing numeric value, it's not NA underscore numeric underscore, it's NA underscore real underscore. And similarly, for character values, NA underscore character underscore is how you specify a missing character value. So if you wanted to replace height with a of 66 with a missing value, notice that the second row here, the person has a height of 66, and that height is a double, uh, which means it's a numeric, because that's the same thing. If you wanted to do that, you would actually have to say, patients then mutate height equals, if else, height equals equals 66, comma, NA underscore real underscore, comma, height. And that would produce the expected result. If you were just to write NA here, you'd actually get an error where it would tell you that, you know, the logical condition doesn't match the numeric condition or the double condition, and it would be confusing. And you'd say, why is this producing an error? But that's why. There is actually a helper function in R called NA underscore if, which is part of tidyverse, which is explicitly designed to replace certain numbers or values with missing values. But so it's, I'm totally happy if you want to use that function instead. However, I kind of feel like um, I like to know, you know, a limited set of verbs and know inside out how to use them rather than have to learn a new verb every time I have to do something slightly different. So um, it, you're, it's totally fair if you'd want to use NA underscore if here. I just wanted to show you the if else way of doing this because that's generalizable to other examples as well. And it's generalizable to case when, when you might have more complicated logic. So notice that if we ran this code, that second row, the height of 66 gets replaced with a missing value. 
So what if we wanted to replace all men with missing values? There's pretty much never a good reason to do that because uh, you know men are an important part of our data set. It's important to know that. But if we wanted to do that, um, what we could do is we could replace um, the value of sex with na underscore character underscore when the value of sex is male. Um, and since we specified the correct missing value type here, the missing values um, would get put in place anytime the sex had previously uh, read as male. So again, if you're wondering, what do I need to know? What you need to know is that if else and case when, both check to make sure that all the pos possible values that are being returned are the same data type. This prevents you from making mistakes. Most of the time, converting between an integer and a numeric isn't a big mistake. It's just kind of something that happens behind the scenes. But if else and case when are really particular and they'll make a fuss even if you're trying to go back and forth between an integer and a numeric. So if you get an error, this is the first thing to look for is are the values that are being returned uh, all the same data type. If you want to assign missing values inside of an if else or case when where you're replacing an actual value with a missing value, then make sure you tell it the missing value uh, type and that you match the type of missing value to the type of your data.